Today we're talking about integration, and our goal for today is to be able to apply anti-differentiation to the indefinite integral. Okay, and anti-differentiation is nothing but basically finding the original function when you're given the derivative. So now we're going backwards. All right, and there's two types of integrals you're going to have. You can have the indefinite integral and the um, um, definite integral. And the indefinite integral is when we're just working with general functions. Um, and definite integrals, more specific types of functions. And you'll see the difference once we get to that later on in the unit. So the antiderivative of x to the n is given by this function right here of 1 over n plus 1 x to the n plus 1 plus c, where c is an arbitrary constant and n equals, sorry, n does not equal negative 1. So if we're given a function to find the antiderivative, to find the original function, all we do is we add 1 to the exponent. Okay, so there's the plus 1 at the top. And then in the front of it, we'll do 1 over n plus 1. Okay, so if our function was x, okay, well then the exponent here is nothing but a 1. So then to actually figure out what the derivative is, well, we'll do 1 over 1 plus 1. Then it'll be x to the 1 plus 1. And then, of course, we have our plus c, our arbitrary constant, okay? Well, 1 plus 1, that's simple enough. That's just a 2, okay? So then we'll have 1 over 2 x to the second plus c, okay? And then that is our antiderivative. That is the original function for x. One way we can always check to make sure that we found the antiderivative correctly is we could take the derivative of this function. Remember, derivative is when we take the exponent bring it to the front. Well, 2 times 1 half is 1, and then we subtract 1 from the exponent. So we'll just be left with x. All right? So this would be very simple over here. We just add 1 to our exponent. So then we'll have 1 over 11x to the 11 plus c. Because again, all we do is we take the exponent, we add 1 to it, in the front it's 1 over n plus 1, and then of course we can't forget our plus c. Here to make this problem a little bit easier, we'll just do x to the negative 5, which we can't do, those rules still apply, and we go from here. Okay, so then we'll have 1 for this problem, we'll have 1 over negative 5 plus 1. Then we'll have x raised to the negative 5 plus 1. And then we can't forget our arbitrary constant, the plus c. Okay? Now again, we do this here. This is, this is just the general rule. Okay? Well, negative 1, sorry, negative 5 plus 1 is nothing but a negative 1 over 4. Okay? And x to the uh, negative 5 plus 1 is nothing but x to the negative 4. And then, of course, we have r plus c. So this will be acceptable. But if we don't want to have any negative exponents, then we just have to make sure that we use our rules. Bring our exponent down to the front. I'm sorry, not down to the front. Down to the, uh, down to the bottom. And then this is what we'll have here. Negative 1 over 4x to the 4th plus c. Over here we can make this one a little bit easier. Remember, if you have a root, that root becomes the denominator of the rational exponent. Bring it on to the front, we'll have 1 over 3 fourths plus 1. And then we'll have x raised to the 3 fourths plus 1. And then of course our plus c, our arbitrary constant. Okay, now 3 fourths plus 1 is nothing but 7 fourths, so 1 over, over 7 fourths. And then we'll have x raised to the 7 fourths plus c. Okay, now if you think about it, you cannot have a fraction within a fraction. So 1 over 7 fourths, if you think keep change flip, just becomes 4, uh, four over 7 x to the 7 fourths plus c. Okay? And then that would be your antiderivative. So let's do a few problems, okay? 
pause this video and then take a moment to try numbers one through six on your paper. All right, so let's see how we did. We get a volunteer for number one. Number one was the answer to the question. Number two. And I forget about those plus C's, okay? Very good. You add one to the exponent, and then one over n plus one in the front. Okay, very good. What about number two? We get a volunteer for number two. Okay. middle part like before you made the exponent positive and can kind of like or did you do like all of those things? I did like one over negative one and all that and then I did one over negative one okay very good okay so then you would have you know, one over negative one x to the negative one plus c and then yes turn that exponent back positive very good We can rewrite this as what? How can we rewrite this? X to the negative 4. Okay, that's how we're able to write it as such. Okay? On to number 5. Let me. basically x to the one fifth to bring it up to the numerator and become a negative one fifth. Then we add one, which will give us four fifths. And so then that flips the fraction down there. Very good. Questions on using that that common rule to take the antiderivative. Yes, the rational exponent form is acceptable as well. It's a good question. 
Other questions? Okay. All right. Moving forward. Anti-differentiation is also known as indefinite integration. It's denoted by the integral symbol, which is that symbol right there that you see. Okay? <laughs> so it might not ask you to take the antiderivative, anti-differentiate. It might just put this symbol. When you see this symbol, it means do the process. Okay? Take the antiderivative. Anti-differentiate. Okay? And this is how you'll see. You'll see it with the notation of a dx or a dt or a dd, whatever the variable is. It's going to match there. So, for example, this is a problem that I, I gave to you. Okay? So, it's the integral of x cubed dx. So, that basically means take the antiderivative. So, you do the process. And what you'll see later on is you'll see an integral that's empty and then some with actual numbers on the top and the bottom. That's how you'll be able to distinguish between the indefinite integral and the definite integral. Without numbers, this represents the indefinite integral. Okay? the antiderivative. Okay, you know how the lowercase f with the prime symbol represented derivative? Well, the capital F of x represents the antiderivative. And here's just some, uh, some notation to go along with it. f of x dx, that is your integrand, your variable integration. It's x clearly, because the dx will change based off of your variable. And then of course your constant of integration is your c. Question? Say again. Does that mean it's a capital F? Capital F equals the, the antiderivative. So that means that you give me the original function. I've given you the original, so you now have to find the integral. Okay? So say it said, given f of x equals x cubed, find, say this was the problem that was given to you. You'll know based off of this notation, capital F means the antiderivative. So then that means this is the derivative, give me the original. So capital F prime basically represents the derivative. So the derivative of this function, which is f of x. So the prime still means derivative. So if you have capital F, that's the original problem. So then with the prime, that means the derivative, which would be just your normal function. Okay, so this symbol still means derivative. The capital F will distinguish between the original function, lowercase, is your derivative. So, without the symbol, this is your original function. When it puts that little prime there, that means, okay, the derivative. Four. Uh, there are some rules to indefinite integrals. Okay, there are some rules to um, indefinite integrals as well. These power rule, which is basically what we just did practice on, okay? But then there's your constant, constant multiple, and some indifference rules as well. Your power rule, again, that's the one we, uh, that you guys have practiced on with the six problems, okay? Your constant rule basically is, you know, you're given a constant as your, as your function that they want you to take the antiderivative of. Okay, so example, it's the integral of 3 dx. Okay, 3 is a constant. Well, the antiderivative of that would be just the constant times x. All right, think about it. If I took the derivative of 3 to the x, what do I get? Just 3. Okay, so whenever you have just the constant that you're taking the um, antiderivative of, it's going to be just that constant times an x. Your constant multiple rule says that if you have a constant times a function that you're take, trying to take the antiderivative of, well, what you can do is you can just pull the constant out of the integral, do the anti-differentiation with the rest of the function, 
and then you just multiply them together. So an example of that, say I had a 2x dx. This is the constant multiple rule here. I have a constant times a function, x. Well, to take the antiderivative of this, all I need to do is pull the constant out of the integral and then just anti-differentiate x to the dx. Okay? So we've done this one before. What's the antiderivative of x? One half x to the oh sorry squared and then you can't forget the, the plus the constant. So then all you do is you multiply the constant by the antiderivative, which is what? The x squared plus at the constant you multiply by two. how your constant multiple rule works. You just pull it out, take the answer to the root of the, the rest of it, and then whatever, whatever answer you get, you just distribute the two over. The constants get multiplied by two, just the meat. Okay. Lastly, some are different rules. Say you have multiple functions being added or subtracted from each other. Well, all you do is you just take the antiderivative of each piece. Okay? So an example of that would be take the integral of 3x squared plus x plus 2dx. Well, all you would do is take the antiderivative of 3x squared, take the antiderivative of x, take the antiderivative of 2, and that's it. And of course, plus 8. Exactly. So maybe like a multiple So we're going to look at a few examples. Okay, does everybody have the rules down? Okay, so we are going to look at a few. All right? A. Which rule am I going to apply here? Power, constant, constant multiple, or sum or difference? Power rule. Okay, we've been, we've been working with this already. Okay, power rule means we just do what? 1 over 6 plus 1, x to the, and you can't forget your plus c. So my answer here is going to be 1 7 times x to the 7 plus c. Power rule there. <coughs> B. Which rule am I using? Just the constant rule. So when I take the um, integral of 4 dt, this is going to become a not a 4x, but a 4 t plus c. Because again, that's your variable of integration. Okay? So 4t plus c, all you do is just Take the constant, multiply by your variable. Here, which one am I going to use? For C. Constant multiple. So I have a 3x to the fifth. Since I have a 3 there, I can easily just bring that outside of the integral and then anti differentiate x to the fifth. Okay, so what is the. Uh, Antiderivative of x to the fifth. One over six. One over six. X to the six plus c. So again, the antiderivative of that, you got to use your power rule. You add one to the exponent. And then one over n plus one. Yes. Like you would take this first and then you would have to distribute the three over. But there, there isn't a, a such thing as a tangible for integration. Answer <laughs> one, one half x to the six plus c. Because I have multiple. 
multiply 30 by 1 6. Down here, I have 3u to the floor plus 6u squared plus 2du. This one I'm going to have to use what? The sum or difference rule along with probably power rule. These are constant multiple. So I'm going to take the antiderivative of the first part plus the antiderivative of the second part plus the antiderivative of the last part. Okay, this is basically what I have to do. Now, once you get the practice, you don't actually have to write all this out. You, you know, you can just recognize and just take the antiderivative of each part. Okay, so we get to that point. We're going to do it like this. Okay, so this first one, I can bring the three out. Take the antiderivative of u to the fourth. What's the antiderivative of u to the fourth? One fifth. U to the fifth. Now, because I have multiple things that I have to take the antiderivative of, I'm going to keep my plus c until the very end. Okay? Will be plus three c. It's so it's always going to be just plus c. What about here? Take out my constant u squared du. Power rule that. One third u to the third. Very good. And the last one is just a constant, so that's going to become a a two u. And now we add our plus c because I've already I've done my whole problem. So my final answer is going to be what? Over five, u to the fifth plus two u to the third plus two u plus c. And you can always check yourself by doing what? The derivative. Five times three fifths is three. Subtract one, that's u to the four. Six u squared plus two. All right. And the last one is another sum one. Okay, it's another sum one. So you take the integral of x dx, and then, I think I should rewrite that? The cube right. root of x? Yes, rewrite it, x to the one third dx, okay? Try to do that, I'll give you 20 seconds. The antiderivative of x? One half x squared. And then what about this one? x to the one third? Three fourths x to the four thirds plus c. I think we did both of those already. That's why I was like, we need to take a second. So we break out. So there you go. Anti differentiation. Break yourself. How well can you do it now? How well?